alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My brothers and sisters, I am here on the rooftop of Al Masjid Al Haram in Mecca to Mukarramah. And uh, subhanallah rabbil alameen, just contemplating and thinking about this wonderful month of Ramadan and what it has in it for us. The blessings of Allah, the mercy, the goodness, everything descending. Uh, all the good things, subhanallah, the sustenance, and so much that Allah has blessed us with. So from this most blessed place on earth, Masjid Al-Haram in Mecca Al-Mukarramah, the best of all the masajid. Uh, here, every single prayer that you read is multiplied, is multiplied 100,000 times. Every single prayer you read here is multiplied 100,000 times. Uh, more than any other masjid besides Al Masjid al Nabawi and the Masjid in uh, Jerusalem, Palestine, Al Masjid al Aqsa. So it's amazing how, when you're in a blessed place in a blessed month, it's really a gift of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's really a gift of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah Almighty make it easy for all of us. Sitting and thinking over the blessings of the month of Ramadan, the blessings of the place, the blessings of the fever that I have and the, the bone aches and everything else that comes with it. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. I thank Allah. And I always say that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has his way of purifying us. Sometimes Allah purifies us by the bad that people speak about us. They say so much of evil. That's a means of Allah cleansing us. They don't know you and it's not between you and them. Sometimes it's through sickness, through hardship, through difficulty, through calamity and so much more. That is all part of uh, the gift of Allah Almighty. You know, this Ramadan, think of one sin, one sin that's really bogging you, that you need to get rid of and get rid of it. Be strong, give it up. Think of one thing that you have to give up and give it up. That would be a huge achievement for Ramadan. Imagine every year if we think of one thing and we, if we think of one thing and we gave it up for the sake of Allah, Something we're supposed to have given up. Wallahi, we would achieve so much. So, subhanAllah, it's something really amazing. Uh, opportunities that Allah gives. Someone is saying in the comments there that you haven't slept. No, I've slept, but I'm not well at all. I'm just smiling because these are my brothers and sisters all here. But to that having been said, my beloved brothers and sisters, I'm not well. But Alhamdulillah, thank Allah. I chose to come and sit here, beautiful tranquility of this lovely uh, part of the masjid on the rooftop where people are actually making tawaf. It's a huge circle of tawaf. Tawaf is the circumambulation of the Kaaba that happens, mashallah, in an anti-clockwise way. Yeah, so this Ramadan, I think it's important for us to look at it uh, from the perspective of doing something that we're supposed to do and giving up something we're supposed to be giving up. So today I want to talk about the sins, the sins that, uh, the sins that we are perhaps we need to get rid of. If we get rid of one at least, one main one, it would really be of great benefit. And if we had to pass, say, ten. Ramadans and we gave up 10 sins it would be amazing it would be amazing 10 major things that we need to give up you know and you know what it is and perhaps you can think of one big thing you need to do and do it you, you, you're weak and you're not doing something you have to do or you're not doing it in the way you have to do it come this is the time yalla be strong and let's go for it inshallah so I thought I'd come on for a few minutes to speak to you guys. Uh, I really wanted to 
do a beautiful recording from this rooftop in a proper manner, but I don't have the permission to actually do a major recording here, so I won't break the rules. But the minor recordings are permissible, that which is just personal and that which doesn't include any major backgrounds and so on. So I was just speaking to one of the guys here in authority and he told me that uh, don't worry, you can just stick to whatever you're allowed to do. So if you need filming, you need permissions. Although this is technically, it's not filming, it's just a live session. Many people go live, but I think when you're sitting properly and you want to put up your stand and so on, it becomes a bit hectic. So I'm holding it in my hand and we're speaking to you, mashallah. Uh, I just want to say something amazing. You know, the facility that is here in Mecca is absolutely stunning. It's amazing. You know, to cater for millions of people for every prayer is mind-boggling. I was speaking to some of the policemen here, and I was watching them as well, and they stand for hours on end, thousands of them. Yesterday, I offered a few of them zamzam, and they said, no, 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 don't worry. And it was almost time to start the fast, and they were just standing, standing, making sure that everything is right, no one does something that they're not supposed to do. Because remember, there are people from different parts of the world. And what happens is, people are educated differently. So they may not understand restrictions and what to do and what not to do. So it's something crazy. Imagine how much of sacrifice they make in order to serve the people who are just coming to Mecca and Medina for Umrah and visiting the Prophet's Masjid and Salam to the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu So we have to give credit where it's due. I promise you the facility as you land, in fact, even before you land, the visa to enter Saudi Arabia has been made so simple, so simple. And it's just amazing. Many people don't appreciate. We're quick to say the you know, negatives, but the positives need to be acknowledged big time. And mashallah, the imams and the people who are here and the amount of uh, money they spend uh, is, is absolutely, you know, mind-boggling. Some might say, well, you know, the hotels are very expensive and things are very expensive. The answer is, look, if you would like a luxury place, you need to have money. But if you would like a place within Mecca that's not that luxury or it's not that close, you will get a very cheap accommodation according to your budget, but it will be a little bit further away. No big deal. So don't complain about it being a thousand dollars a night right next to the Haram in, in, in peak season when there is another place for a hundred dollars a night in Azizia, for example, which is a few kilometers away. So we want it always to be close, to be cheap and to be luxurious. You can never have those three together. You've got to sacrifice one of those three. For accommodation in Mecca or Medina, you can never have three things together. You can't have cheap, luxurious, and close to the masjid. You have to sacrifice one of them. It can be cheap and luxurious, but distant from the masjid. Or it can be luxurious and close to the masjid, but expensive. Or it can be close to the masjid and cheap, but it won't be luxurious at all. Uh, and it's limited. So you have to decide, you know, you can't have everything all in one. You can't. And that's why I say when people say, oh, but it, it costs a lot. Well, it depends how and what uh, you'd like to do. Also, it depends on when you've booked. If you book early, well in advance, you, you get it uh, relatively cheaper. But if you, if you book late, lastminute.com, you pay an arm and a leg. And generally, travel has become expensive for anything and everything, not just for Mecca and Medina. So, alhamdulillah, I must say that, you know, if you sit and watch how they have cordoned off some areas and they have only allowed people in a haram to do certain things and so on, it's just amazing. I now know exactly how it works and I salute the guys. So, Allah, it's, it's something that you have to... You have to witness in order to appreciate. People get frustrated and so on. So I want to close by making a dua that Allah bring all of you and your families and your loved ones here to Mecca and Medina. 
May Allah Almighty bring you guys here and make it easy for you. May Allah Almighty really grant you the best of this world and the next. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide all of us and give us goodness. Amen. Let me just recap what I said today. That let's try and give up one sin, one thing that we have, uh, one thing that we, we are trying to get rid of. If we can get rid of it at the moment, uh, one thing we can get rid of, we have to get rid of it as soon as possible, inshallah. One thing, one thing, if one sin, quit it. And perhaps one thing you have to do, do it. It's month of Ramadan, be strong. All right, guys, there seems to be a few people who are here waiting. Uh, I think they've probably watched this live from somewhere. Come around to say salam. Let me greet the brothers. In the meantime, love you all. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.